Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to Cycle Sunday. Now, hopefully by now you will have tuned in to episode one of Cycle Sunday and know the gentleman sat next to me, Paul Bowker from Criterium Cycles. We are up here in Edinburgh doing something very special. We're basically building my dream road bike. Yeah. And if you saw episode one, the guys will have seen that we talked through the basics of choosing the right frame for the type of riding we're doing. Correct. And sizing the right frame. We did. And at the end of that video, we revealed what we're going to build a Bianchi Ultra XR4 in Celeste blue. Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the frame. The next job is to basically fit the frame to me. Yeah, we've got to choose the components based on your fit. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, and actually, two videos to do with fitting because it's quite a big subject. Yeah. So in this video, we're going to talk around the basics of what a fit is and the types of things you're going to do. Yes. And then in the next video, I'll get my Lycra on and we'll jump on this contraption that sat behind us, the yes. fit jig. Yes. And we'll go through the details. Indeed. Indeed. But the interesting place for me when we talked about this is I just thought you'd get me sat on there straight mm -hmm. away. But the place we're going to start. Yeah is shoes and pedals. Absolutely correct, yeah. The, your foot position is the datum around your fit. So once we have your correct shoe, your correct cleat system, so pedal and cleat system, and we've set those up correctly, that is the datum that will affect your saddle height, your saddle fore and aft position, and then we work all the way across and into the hand. Right, okay. No, I'd yeah. never have thought, right, we're gonna start with, with your shoes. Yeah. Now, I guess, f if you're getting into cycling, mm -hmm. and I know when I, I've obviously been riding bikes since I was a kid, but sure. when you get into road cycling, you suddenly yeah. have this dreaded thing, I need to clip my mm -hmm. shoes into the pedals, physically yeah. connect my shoes and my pedals together. Yeah. But I guess you don't have to do that. Nope. And if you're mountain biking, yeah. a lot of people don't like to do that. So you could choose yeah. a pedal, and we've got some selections of pedals yeah, here. Got some options. So I guess this is a really good example where there's no cleat on there, it's just a flat pedal. Yeah, so th this one here is what we call a half and half. So we've got a flat on one side that we can uh, put some pins in there to help retain the shoe. If you flip it over, uh, Peter, we've now got a mountain bike style cleat system that you can then clip into as well. Okay, so the story here, we're, we're building a road bike. Yep. So mountain bike and road bike cleats are slightly different, but that doesn't mean you can't use a mountain bike cleat on a road bike if that's what you're comfortable with. No, you've, you've got so many people who fall into the etiquette trap. So I think it's important to understand that there is no right and wrongs. If you're on a road bike, we generally say, don't use a mountain bike shoe. Yeah. Because when you then get a road style shoe, you can visibly see the width difference of it. Yeah. And when you're on a slender road bike, you've got more chance that you'll clip the, the frame and the crank arm. Yeah. So having a slender shoe on a road bike is handy. Yeah. But whether you decide to use a mountain bike style cleat system, yeah. because you want to walk around on... Because <laughs> you always see, that's the worst thing, when you're off the bike, yeah. you see kind of cyclists walking around like, like they're walking on ice on penguins, because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not the easiest thing in the world. It's, it's not, and, and the reason being is, is that a road, um, a road shoe has the cleat bolted directly onto the sole plate, mm. and it's, um, it's exposed, and that lifts the toe box up, and then you walk on your heels. Yeah. When you're on a mountain bike style pedal, the smaller cleat can then recess, and then you've got a normal sole plate to walk on. Yeah. So I think un understanding what the differences are between the mountain bike cleat and the road cleat is the first thing. Yeah. So a mountain bike cleat is a much smaller cleat. It doesn't have the same overall 
width and length, so therefore it's not as stable platform of which to ride and do lots and lots of miles on. But ultimately, if you are going to be riding for enjoyment and you feel more comfortable with the mountain bike style system, go with that. Yeah. If you're getting a new bike, it's always nice to have one familiarity point. Mm. And if it takes you a little bit longer to move into a road system, fine. Yeah. So this is a road shoe that's designed for a mountain bike. Yeah, the, this is a wonderful bit of kit. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's a road upper, but with a mountain bike attachment okay. to it. So yeah. that's perfect if you've come from mountain biking or, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. So in terms of what, so I ride with a, a road shoe yeah. and I use the Shimano SPD system. So SPD is Shimano Pedaling Dynamics. Yeah. And under the SPD, you have the mountain bike, which is a two bolt design. Yeah. And then you have SPD SL, which is the road system that uses the three bolt yeah. system. See, every day is a school day when you have a conversation about bikes with this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and my pedal yeah. looks like that. Absolutely. Okay. So it's just one sided. Yes. And if you, let's see if we can show to camera here. Um, if you hold the pedal, now this is a brand new pedal, but you see how it is healing down. Yeah. So it's designed to be weighted so that the pedal will hold itself in that position and that will allow you to go in over the top yeah. and engage. Yeah. Clip in. Absolutely. Okay. So that, that's my, uh, interesting, on my mountain bike, yeah. I actually ride with a mountain bike cleat and a half and half. Because sometimes when you're going up a technical descent or something, you don't want to clip in or it's difficult to clip in you can just drop your pedal yeah, in your for confidence. Shoe on top. Yeah. yeah so okay so that I, i'd like to continue with a, a system like that yes um and then i guess the other thing about the shoes yeah is because these range in price hugely don't they they do um, so the white shoe uh that that we've got here mm -hmm. this is a shoe at around 100 pounds yeah and what we have is that the sole plate is manufactured out of a composite. Yeah. And each shoe has got a stiffness index. Yeah. The higher the stiffness index, a lot of people fall into the trap that um, the higher the stiffness index, they think it's going to be more uncomfortable and more uncompromising. It's actually not really true. The higher the stiffness index supports the foot better and for longer. So if you think about um, your, your powers coming in through the ankle, yeah, down there. down there, but then the power's being transmitted through the pedal, which is up here. Yeah. So the stiffer the shoe and the stiffer the platform that your feet have got, the better the power transfer. Mm. So as we move into higher stiffness indexes, yeah, okay, it's gonna take you a little bit longer for your feet to adapt to that. We've mm. talked about adaptation before but ultimately you'll be able to travel longer with, with, with a more efficient pedal stroke. Yeah, and I guess the stiffness comes from the material that from the sole plate. plate. Yeah, so, so as we move from 100 pounds yeah. into the blue and black shoe, which I really love that color, mm. uh, we've got uh, now a full carbon fiber sole plate. Carbon fiber. Yeah, carbon yeah. fiber. Yes. I know. We, yes. we know you love those words. That's the only reason why I like bikes is because <laughs> lots of carbon fiber. Lots of carbon fiber. And if we want to get really nerdy about it, yeah. moving to a carbon fiber sole plate also gives us what's called a lower stack height, which is from the center of the pedal spindle yeah. to the bottom of your foot. Oh, because that's, I guess, because you're going to have... Yep, the cleat on there. Yeah. As we move up the systems, yeah. then basically your foot is getting lower and lower to the center line of the pedal spindle yeah. for a lower center of gravity. I mean, it goes, it I love goes this stuff. crazy. Um, but moving into the carbon fiber sole plate is, oh. is a nice thing. <laughs> He's seen them. So this shoe is, is lovely. And this it's now has- Really light as well. Really light. And it's got a stiffness index of 14. Mm -hmm. Now put that into context, a, um, the 100 pound shoe's got a stiffness index of eight. Oh, 
So we're talking substantially stiffer, yeah. but we're also looking a lighter shoe. Yeah. We've also moved on to a double uh, retention system from uh, a firm called Boa. Mm -hmm. And the beauty about this system is that uh, the, the, the quality of this Boa system, we can actually tighten mm. and back off mm. while still engaged in the, um, in the pedal. Mm -hmm. So you imagine setting off first thing, there we go, so we're tightening and loosening. So you imagine setting off at six o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. five degrees ambient temperature, your foot hasn't swollen yet, mm. you'll tighten to a point where it feels nice on your foot. Half an hour, an hour in, your feet start swelling, mm. it means that you can go to the top of the pedal stroke just reach down and start just backing off one or two turns nice. so you then don't get um, uh, constriction yeah. uh, around the foot. As we start moving up to this level of shoe, we also have twin boa dials, yeah. which means that we can adjust independently the bridge and the midfoot. Mm -hmm. And again, it just gives us a really, really nice um, uh, retention. And then we move into the upper. So the upper is using um, a, a synthetic product, really high end, that again is designed to be more durable and more supple than leather, mm. but have a massively more water resistant, um, so it doesn't absorb the water into the material to keep the weight of the shoe down. Yeah. And then finally, even in the heel cup, uses what's called a cat's tongue. So if you put your finger down, Ooh. it's smooth, and pull your finger up, Ooh. you can feel it almost barbed. Yeah. So that catches on your sock and just gives you a really great heel retention. <laughs> I never knew there was so much technology uh, around a shoe. Oh, uh, we can go really a lot further into do you it. Have ones made of, do you have made, ones made of glass? I know that don't change back to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only before Cinderella, yeah. <laughs> Mate, wow, okay. Yeah. So, shoe, yeah. pedals. Yeah. That was a long chat about shoes and pedals. Yes. However, really important part. So... It is. When we get onto the jig, what are the kind of things that we're going to be working with to... F or, or I feel like on the bike, what are the components that we're going to be able to um, select to make the best position for me? So when, when we're fitting somebody, it is important to get the shoe, which is why we're doing it in this process. It's important to get the shoe and the pedal system that is going to be going on the bike. Mm. Because if, we, if you brought your shoes in that you have at the moment and you brought your pedals in mm. and the shoe that you had and the pedal that you had could have a different stack height of maybe five, six millimeters. Mm. Well, if I bolt that um, on, on, onto the jig, well, already my positionings are out. Mm. So it's important for us to select the shoe, to select the pedal. We will then, when we're going to fit you, get you on to the jig with the pedals fitted to the jig. Mm with the shoes fitted to your feet, and then we know we're using accurate measurements. When I bought my bike, yes. I bought my bike, and then I ordered the pedals and the shoes online and got them a couple of days later. Yeah. <laughs> Which I reckon most, most people, people do. do. And the other thing that we fall into is that when somebody's being fitted, and maybe a couple of years later, not even that long, but somebody goes, oh, you know, I'm just gonna get some new shoes and pedals. They'll then, put those onto the bike with the fit based on their old shoes and pedals, not change anything. And mess and the fit up. Mess the fit up and wonder why they're now not comfortable on the bike. Okay. Yeah. So in the next video. Yes. So firstly, I might have to don some Lycra. Yes. <laughs> some more pictures. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry peddlers. <laughs> um, so you're going to make some, some, so I guess it's, the, the mechanics, I'm talking about this beforehand. Yes. Um, from, from my hips down, so the length of my different leg yes. bones. Yes. Um, that's, if you like, from the seat down, and we'll 
does that kind of work out how where where the cranks are going to be and how long they need to be and all that kind of stuff? Am I preempting things here? No, you're not preempting things. These these are really great questions. I think the most important thing, if if, if you go on a fit course, and I was very fortunate with um, uh, with the the instructor, the teacher that I had, um, very, very, very good guy. And almost fit course, day one, morning one, hour one, the fundamentals of fit is that everything that you adjust via the saddle, whether it be saddle height, saddle fore and aft, or saddle pitch, affects the hip down. Right. Your frame size, your frame geometry, the handlebar height, the hood length, the drop, the bar width, the bar rotation, the hood rotation affects the hip up. And where we see a lot of people making fundamental mistakes is they feel, oh, I'm overreaching. So what people do is they bring the saddle forward. Uh I've done, You've that. Not done that. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. When he said when he spoke on the phone, I'm like, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. I don't know. I know free. so many people who've done it. Well, it's free. Yeah. I'll just move the saddle forward a bit. Correct. But what you're actually doing is totally messing up everything down there. Absolutely. And where all your power comes from is an efficiency, I guess, is yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, if that's not a good reason to watch the next video, I don't know what is. Yeah. There seems to be an awful lot to it. Ooh. Oh. Oh. You, you did this in my first video. No. When he looks at me like this, this is very exciting. There's a theme. There's a theme. What have you got? Should we see your shoes? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, I only said I wanted the, that kind of cleat. Yes. But we might not be going for that particular pedal. No. And I don't want your comments box. <laughs> to, 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 what do you mean? No, I don't want your comments to up. Look, there is, whether you go for different brands of pedals, yeah. pretty much they're all pretty good. Yeah. However, I'm not going to reveal anything else at the moment. No. But we've decided to go for a look pedal. Yes, which is this one. Which is that pedal. Number one, because it's got the word carbon written on it. It has Keo Blade Carbon. Yes. It looks awesome. It looks really it's good. really light as well. It is. Um, but the reason being is, is because of the transmission, so all the drivetrain components and the brand of the drivetrain components that we're looking at. Mm. Which is in another video. Which is in another video. We feel that this might be a better and more appropriate brand to go with. Yes. Not giving anything Not away. Giving anything very good. Away. Very good. Yes. Okay. But the shoes. But the shoes. <laughs> Pete likes his style. He, he, he likes what his. Do you mean? He likes his bling. Yeah. Right. So whilst we could have gone for a really. Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah. They're... No. <laughs> While we could have picked up a really appropriate UK weather safe. Yes. Black shoe. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Look at these bad boys. Now, I, I currently wear white shoes yes. on my bike. Yeah. Um, oh, mate, they are lovely. They are they? really nice. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in the next video, I yep. shall be donning these. Yeah. A little bit of lycra yep. and getting on your fit jig. Yeah, we'll need to do the cleat fit as well. Yes, which we'll talk about yes. in the next video. Yeah. Um, so guys, don't forget at the end of this, we will be doing a podcast yep. um, talking far more about some of the things that we haven't mentioned here. Yeah. Um, there's a whole bunch of kind of biomechanical stuff that we yeah. might end up talking about. Yes. Um, so make sure you join the podcast. I'll put links below. Um, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Petroped, and I'll put all the details for Criterium Cycle, their website, and all of the social. Make sure you follow the guys on social. Um, and make sure you tune in to the next video of Cycle Sunday. If nothing else, to see me in some lycra. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna watch now then. But guys, I hope you've 
found that as I never realized, and, and it's one of these things, like many of the conversations we've had, I've cycled a long time and there was so much I didn't know, I mm. didn't appreciate. Yes, I knew stiffness was important. Yes, I knew there were different types of pedals, but the impact that the pedal and the shoe and the cleat have on the rest of your comfort on the bike and yeah. efficiency on the bike. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't really talked about efficiency and, and marginal gains yet, but that comes in the next video a lot, I would imagine. Um, I never realized it was such a big subject. Sure. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Cycle Sunday. Right safe. Right safe. Definitely. Look at these shoes, man.